This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, an employment expo this weekend at the Dunedin Town Hall hopes to assist cabri workers following the announced closure of the factory. Queenstown people should be able to catch a fully electric green cab by the end of this month. And a Dunedin woman who found nine needles at a Mornington bus stop last night says drug users are wasting their lives. Good evening, I'm Roselle LeBone. A Cadbury Employment Expo was held this weekend at the Dunedin Town Hall to assist workers without jobs following the announced closure of the Cadbury factory. Over 350 Cadbury staff have been made redundant with the factory set to close in early 2018. These are the faces of some of the 350 workers of Dunedin's Cadbury factory who are putting on a brave front while facing the prospect of Christmas without jobs. These people were lined up early on Saturday morning hoping to find new employment. Some had worked at the Cadbury factory for more than 30 years. It's around about 30, 30 years. It's about around. Uh, rolled in there, it's been uh, making chocolates and refined, passing down. Yeah, all those things. Some say the mood is still sombre in the factory, even though the initial shock has worn off. And then it started to sink in a few days after that one, and then realised, yep, it is what it is. While for some it was their second time being made redundant. It's actually the second time I've been made redundant from Cadbury, so I got made redundant in 2009. So it was a bit of a shock to find out that they were, yeah, actually closing the place down. So, yeah. Others felt the career change they were forced to make would open new doors. Uh, hopefully, there's a few people around here that have got IT positions sort of advertised or um, recruitment agencies have IT related work. And from the turn of prospective employers at the expo, it seems they might have a reason to be optimistic. Nigel Davenport and his team travelled down from Araki and says the region can take on all 350 workers. Uh, we have a huge number of opportunities across a number of uh, industries. We've got a lot of food processing up our way, a bit of a food bowl of the south, middle of the South Island. While the new chocolate baron in town, Jim O'Malley, says Ocho will be ready to hire mid-2018. So what we're doing is we're taking names and contacts addresses of everybody who's working at Cadbury's so that when we start um, hiring in about 18 months time, 12 to 18 months time, we're going to send this distribution list out, well, we're going to use the distribution list to advertise the jobs to these people. Cadbury Dunedin site manager Judith Meir says the firm spent four and a half thousand hours training staff with external qualifications. And she says most employees have taken up the training. Judith Meir denies allegations that Rainbow Confectionery missed out on a contract with Mondelez to continue making chocolate in the South Island due to poor hygiene practices. Daryl Baser, The South Today. The Queenstown Lake District Council is being urged not to allow boats to speed on part of the Clufa River. The river downstream of Lake Wanaka is popular with holiday makers wanting to cool off over summer. Jet boats are currently restricted to 5 km per hour on the river as far downstream as the Albert Town Bridge. However, the council wants to remove the speed restriction. 285 people have made submissions calling for the restrictions to remain, while 12 are in favour of lifting them. The submissions will be considered at a hearing in Wanaka on Wednesday. Queenstown people should be able to catch a fully electric taxi by the end of this month. But that's not all. By early next year, the town will also have its first electric vehicle fast charge unit. Queenstown-based Green Cabs is about to turn over a new leaf. Its first fully electric taxi is due before the end of the month. 
And as well, ChargeNet is preparing to install Queenstown's first electric vehicle fast charger outside Pack and Save in Frankton. We were hoping to get it on before Christmas, but it's looking January, February-ish. Green Cab's area manager Martin Amit says Queenstown will be the second location in New Zealand after Wellington to have a green cab that is 100% electric powered. And he says having the new fast electric car charger is a game changer for his company. You know, they can average anywhere between 250 to 350, 400 kilometres in a shift. Uh, the range of an electric vehicle realistically is only about 200. So it gives them the peace of mind. It could take an electric vehicle 10 minutes to top up and up to 25 minutes to recharge, compared to 11 or 12 hours when plugged into a conventional three-pin plug socket. Green cab driver Dennis Kozovic says he's open to upgrading his hybrids in the near future. I would say in two, three years, the car, the cost of the car will be paid off by uh, by the amount of money we save mm -hmm. on petrol, not to pay uh, mm -hmm. for petrol. And how happy are you with the new charger next to back and save? Oh, it would be great. The cost of using the fast charger will depend on the kilometers traveled and the car model. Electric vehicle owner and mum, Simone Ray, says fast charger will encourage people with electric vehicles to come to Queenstown. She says electric vehicles are the way of the future. From an eco point of view, alongside the cost savings, I used to spend about $70 a week on fuel just to run the children to school and back. And now I spend about $45 a month on power. Green Cab's 2015 Nissan Leaf X is expected to be on the road by the end of the month and an electric fast charger estimated to cost up to $100,000 will be fully accessible at Pack and Save early next year. Mina Amso, The South Today. The Southern DHB says its World Antibiotics Awareness Week is encouraging people to seek advice from healthcare professionals before taking antibiotics. Southern DHB Chief Medical Officer Dr Nigel Miller says taking antibiotics when they are not needed can cause bacteria to become resistant. He says it is important to only take antibiotics which are prescribed to you and to remember antibiotics are not always the answer. Dr Miller says antibiotics do not cure viruses like colds and flu. A Dunedin woman who found nine needles at a Mornington bus stop last night says drug users are risking other people's lives. The South Today found out more. This image posted online is one of many indicating drug use in Dunedin. Nine hypodermic needles were found at this Mornington bus stop on Mailer Street by Helen Bennett when she was out walking her dogs last night. So my husband went across the road to the bus shelter outside the Mornington Mall and there he discovered all those needles, like must have been a good 50 of them probably, near under and near the bus shelter. Bennett says she is concerned about the risks to the public by intravenous drug users carelessly discarding needles. When you first look at it they sort of look like pens or something like that, you know, like a child could mistake it for something like that and then examine it, you know, and then, and then later on something might go wrong or a dog could stand on it or yeah anything or a person mowing the lawns around there you know once the lawns and that started to grow over at the top of it. Manager of the Devo Needle Exchange Program Barb Smith is equally appalled by the risks created by needles left in public places. The thought of people getting needle stick injuries is horrific um, and when I hear too that they're in the, in the playgrounds um, you know, innocent people, innocent children potentially um, can be the victims of this and it's just horrendous when there is absolutely no need for this to be happening. She says carelessly discarded needles has become a problem in Dunedin just in the last six weeks. And I'm talking here even in children's playground areas, um, at the side of the streets, on the footpath, chucked over into people's gardens. Smith would not speculate as to why the needles might have been dumped, but she says that her organisation provides a solution for discarding needles. Part of this organisation is a one-for-one 
uh, needle exchange return of used gear and they are supplied free of charge with canisters. Um, there should be none of this happening and we violently oppose this nonsense. Drug users can also dispose of their worn out needles at any pharmacy or even just by placing them in a capped plastic bottle. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, a group promoting the rights of tenants delivers a message to Parliament. And we check out the action at the weekend's Craft Beer Festival. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. At the Otago SPCA, our role is to make sure that all animals in Dunedin and the Otago region are being looked after properly. Otago SPCA offer a haven for animals in need and adoption opportunities for the community. We appreciate your interest and support. For help and advice, we're on call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have any concerns, give us a call. Circopolis, a crossroads between imagination and reality, limits and possibilities. Don't miss Circopolis, described as Cirque du Soleil's hipper, sexier cousin at the Regent. Twelve performing artists combine the worlds of circus, dance and theatre. This is your only chance to see this extraordinary show by Montreal Cirque Eloise in Dunedin at the Regent, 23rd to 26th of November. Book now at the box office or ticket direct. Gillian's Care. They care for loved ones, families, friends and our community. At a time of bereavement, care and support makes all the difference. And Gillian's know this. They're here for you when you need it most. From advanced funeral planning to a service for your loved one, Gillian's will guide and assist you with your individual choices. Their legendary attention to detail and passion to get it right are second to none. Gillian's. Caring for families in our community since 1962. New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. My elves and I just love coming to Alex Campbell's. That's my favourite shop. I always get good value here and good boys really deserve good brands and good quality. And look at these teas. Local beaches on some of them too. This is only for the good boys, the old boys, the young boys. What about some bright shorts for the boys? Excellent. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits! Oh, help! Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 606 for all your pain relief. Motor Trade Finance proudly brings you Rural Delivery. A look at the places and faces behind New Zealand agriculture. Tuesday evenings 8.30, repeating Saturday morning at 8 and Sunday afternoons 4.30. University of Otago. Usually the atmosphere is charged with the energy of student life. But this week is the week before exams. Hey, Tain. Not now, man. I'm panicking. Come on, mate. I know just what you need. In here? No, no. Is this it? No. This is the place to ease your stress. Hey, Tain. Fancy a little cuddle? Welcome back. A group promoting the rights of tenants is to deliver an open letter to Housing Minister Phil Twyford on the steps of Parliament tomorrow. The group addressing the Minister include Renters United, 
representatives from the University of Otago Department of Public Health and others. Organisers say Children's Minister Tracy Martin and a representative from the Green Party have also been invited. The open letter has been signed by thousands of New Zealanders supporting moves to improve the lives of people who live in rented accommodation. Over 6,000 people turned up to the Forsyth Bar Stadium this weekend for the Dunedin Craft, Beer and Food Festival. The South Today joined the crowd for a drink. A huge crowd enjoyed wild foods and craft beer under the shelter of the Forsyth Bar Stadium roof on Saturday. With live music plus lots of activities, those who attended were having a good time. It's a fun day out. Yeah. I've been to four of them. It's, this is the best one yet. So yeah. it's a good time. Event manager Jason Schroeder said this year more than ever was tailored to the fans of craft beer and food. We're lucky in that we can have it in a uh, all weather uh, stadium with a roof, yeah. which, which helps definitely. Um, but it's also, I guess, uh, the balance of kind of. Um, showcasing you know the, the really diverse range of beers but also in, an, in a really community focused event um, through like the, the the range of artists we have that we kind of changed this year to really focus on on our on what our demographic is. First prize for home brew was awarded to amateur brewer Harvey Kane for his homemade Russian Imperial Stout. I started home brewing 18 months ago um, didn't have much cash started getting into the kits from the supermarket did two of those and then discovered all grain brewing and just loved it with a passion, just really got into it and uh, been thoroughly enjoying it ever since. Kane said that home brewing appealed to his other interests. But, but yeah, mostly I, I enjoy crafting things, I make a nice uh, ciabatta bread as well, so you know I enjoy creating things from scratch and creating beer from scratch is as good as it gets. Uh, the hobby also fits in with things like electronics which I also enjoy doing, so um, you know you're always making temperature controllers and fun things like that. So it's, it's just a great hobby and I just really enjoy it. Various wild foods and over 400 varieties of beer, cider and wine were on offer on the day. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. After the break on The South Today, Timaru Hall gets some much needed TLC following a devastating fire. And we look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 6006 for all your pain relief. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second hand books. With the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. For three generations, the Kilpatrick family have ensured Jimmy's Pies are still world famous in the South Island. Made to an old family recipe, Jimmy's Pies have been one of New Zealand's traditional takeaway foods, prepared daily on the premises alongside a range of savouries, sausage rolls and cakes, Jimmy's Pies are distributed throughout the Lower South Island. Jimmy's Pies are sure to satisfy your travelling munchies. I just love coming to Alex Campbell's, that's my favourite shop. I always get good value here, and good boys, really deserve good brands and good quality. Look at these teas, local beaches on some of them too. This is only for the good boys, the old boys, the young boys. What about some bright shorts for the boys? Excellent. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Gillian's Care. They care for loved ones, families, friends and our community. At a time of bereavement, care and support makes all the difference. And Gillian's know this. They're here for you when you need it most. 
From advanced funeral planning to a service for your loved one, Gillian's will guide and assist you with your individual choices. Their legendary attention to detail and passion to get it right are second to none. Gillian's, caring for families in our communities since 1962. Helping New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. At the Otago SPCA, our role is to make sure that all animals in Dunedin and the Otago region are being looked after properly. Otago SPCA offer a haven for animals in need and adoption opportunities for the community. We appreciate your interest and support. For help and advice, we're on call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have any concerns, give us a call. Loss of collagen is the reason for those fine lines and wrinkles. Silverhorns Collagen Plus naturally supports your collagen levels, giving you younger, firmer looking skin, healthier, shinier hair and stronger nails. Joints, tendons, ligaments and cartilage all benefit from healthy collagen levels, the very foundation of structural health. Support collagen levels naturally with Collagen Plus by Silverhorn. Be quick, buy one now and get a second pack half price. Call now 0800 502 402. Motor Trade Finance proudly brings you Rural Delivery. A look at the places and faces behind New Zealand agriculture. Tuesday evenings 8.30, repeating Saturday morning at 8 and Sunday afternoons 4.30. Welcome back. Tim Roo's historic West End Hall has received an upgrade following a devastating fire two years ago. The hall, owned by Timaru District Council, has been unusable until now. The South today found out more. Timaru's 93-year-old hall was almost destroyed after rubbish bins next to it were set alight, damaging much of the building. At last week's official opening, people could see the results of the almost $800,000 makeover, paid for by insurance, plus an extra $100,000 from the council. The work has allowed upgrades to the hall such as installing heat pumps, double glazed windows, insulation, plus a modern kitchen and bar. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. Public submissions on the idea of a new Southland Regional Development Agency were considered at an Environment Southland hearing today. There were 107 written submissions and 48 verbal submissions presented to the hearing panel. Sharon Reese reports. Support for community groups, the arts and retaining the work of Venture Southland were common themes at the submissions hearing this morning. The Southland Regional Development Agency proposal is for a council controlled organisation to be formed, bringing together local organisations to further Southland's economic future. Submitter Sarah McCarthy, however, said the proposal completely overlooked any form of the arts or not for profit organisations. Shakespeare and the Park Charitable Trust thinks that the omission of the arts from the source document speaks volumes about the document itself and um, their motivations. According to the proposal, the agency would assume the responsibility of Venture Southland and its projects, which McCarthy says could have a negative impact on the arts community. The way that things work now with Venture Southland, that means that Shakespeare in the Park and other small community groups get so much support so that we're able to do what we love and to enrich the community alongside that. And so we just really, we love Venture and we love what they do for us. And we see the source document as it stands as a threat to that. Submitting on behalf of Venture Southland, Chief Executive Paul Casson said he was supportive in principle of the proposal, but wanted to ensure the change didn't hinder the momentum of the organisation's current projects. We're about making sure that any new entity that is formed is actually going to take the momentum of what's currently underway, uh, particularly around uh, those projects, um, and moving forward that we can, we can actually get the benefit of that. So we're more than, you know, as an entity, um, the focus is, yes, we'll be part of a, a new entity moving forward which is fantastic uh, we won't you know we, and we, we gather that information that we've currently got and actually move uh, up a notch to actually increase opportunities for the region to grow. According to an executive summary of public submissions there was strong support for the transfer of Venture Southland staff into the SRDA structure. Over 20 submitters noted support for the organisation with some suggesting no changes should be made. Following the hearing a final report with recommendations will be given to the regional councils. Sharon Reese, The South Today. 
And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. A Cadbury Employment Expo was held this weekend at the Dunedin Town Hall to assist workers without jobs following the announced closure of the factory. Queenstown people should be able to catch a fully electric taxi by the end of this month and charge their e-vehicles by this time next year. And a Dunedin woman who found nine needles at a Mornington bus stop last night says drug users are risking other people's lives. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Craig Page. Oh, good evening, Roselle. Yeah, we've got more on the uh, the plans for Dunedin's Harbourside and Steamer Basin area. Um, oh, OD such an audacious plan, that one. It certainly is. ODT broke the story on Saturday, of course, with uh, Damien Van Brandenburg's uh, glorious plans, and they are quite impressive. We've had a huge response to this, these visions, um, mm. and we're looking at tomorrow how it might be funded. Um, there's the government, of course, new government's announced that they're putting a billion dollars into regional development um, a year. So we've caught up with um, the Minister Shane Jones about where Dunedin might fit into this. He's really positive about it. Um, said Dunedin's taken a lot of knocks in recent years with a Hillside going back a while, and more recently Cadbury's, and, and said that if it has the, the public support and the backing of civic leaders, then it's certainly something the government might be prepared to look at. So um, It's an incredible design. I'd just love to see how that could work. Oh, it is. And I, mean, I think the good thing is that it's been created by Dunedin people for Dunedin and I think that's been some of the criticism in the past. You know, we've got overseas investors and, and people from outside the city trying to put their imprint on our city whereas these people are, are local and, and have a feel for the city so hopefully things will happen with there. A lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of work to be done yet but uh, pretty positive so far. Great stuff. Um, also a bit of a battle looming over Easter trading in mm. Dunedin. Um, of course the government legislation now requires councils to, to uh, put their own uh, legislation in place for, for Easter trading and next year is a bit of an exceptional year for Dunedin. We've got three Ed Sheeran concerts over Easter of course. Um, they're, they're estimating 65,000 people from out of the city will be attending these concerts and a lot of the restaurants are, and, and that service industries are, are, are worried about what, what's going to be on offer for these people. When they Certainly concern for overworked hospitality staff. Oh, it is, and that, and that is the problem as well. You know, lots of unions and the churches as well saying, well, we shouldn't be opening it. It's, it's sacrosanct, and, and let's keep it closed. So uh, that debate's mm. going to continue tomorrow, and, of course, the council will reserve its decision. But it looks as though they may make an exception for next year and then re revisit it for the following year, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. All right, that's great. Thank you so much, Craig, for that. Looking forward Thank to it. Sounds like a good read. And now it's time for the weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Collagen Plus. Looking at the situation, a very static weather pattern lining up for this week with a large high pressure area bringing mostly fine weather to the region for the rest of the week. Firstly down south, Balclufa, Catlins, Gore and Lumsden can expect light winds fine and 15 degrees. Westward to central region is in for light winds, fine weather with Alexandra 18 degrees, Wanaka 17, Queenstown 16 and Tiana 14. To the north now, Aomaru and Timaru can expect afternoon easterlies, fine and 14 degrees. Omarama and Twizel have light winds, fine and 17 degrees. Here in Dunedin tonight, some low cloud with an overnight low of 7 degrees. Tomorrow, low cloud clearing and long sunny periods during the day with light northeasterly winds developing, cool temperatures, some low cloud returning tomorrow night, 14 and 7 degrees and mostly fine with sunny periods on Wednesday but some low cloud at night. Light north easterlies 14 and 6 degrees. And in Invercargill tonight some cloud with an overnight low of 5 degrees. Tomorrow becomes fine and sunny with light winds 14 and 5. And remaining mostly fine on Wednesday with patchy low cloud at night, light winds and pleasant temperatures 14 and 5 degrees. And that's our show for this Monday. For the latest news from the South Today team, you can follow us on Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.